Welcome to the Retirement Education Hour. We're so glad you're here with us today. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mozak, and it's always a pleasure to be back in the studio with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. We have a great program lined up for you today. You're going to want to stay tuned. Plus, we'll be telling you how you can meet Kirk, Paul, and many other financial educators with the Retirement Education Foundation. They have great courses that are held throughout the year at major local universities. We'll be giving you the details on that coming up. And I want to make sure that you are aware that you can listen to this program anywhere you find your favorite podcast. That's right. All you have to do is search for Retirement Education Hour, and you can share it with a friend. Today, we want to talk about a big risk. And this is a risk that we often don't discuss, doesn't come up a lot, flies under the radar. But Kirk and Paul, this is about underspending in retirement. And you say this is the real problem with not planning. What do you mean by that? Well, so this is a unique, different show for sure. And I, and in this, this applies to so many of the people we know that are listening to our show, right? We, we know the demographics of people who are listening to our show. And we know they tend to be pretty affluent people. They're professionals, highly educated. They've saved for retirement and they have resources. And it is not a fear that anyone is thinking about. And that fear is underspending your money. And, and, and why is that a fear? <laughs> well, because as a result, you are going to work longer than you need to. Most of you, most of you with the one to $10 million saved for retirement are going to work longer than you need to. You're going to spend way less than you should and what you can spend. You're going to allow short-term market events and uh, political issues and elections to drive your spending patterns in retirement, which is really unfortunate because the reality is we don't know how long we're going to be healthy, be able to be active or even alive to enjoy and spend these dollars. So what we're going to do today is we're going to share some statistics with what most people die with, how much money they have left at the end. And then we're going to talk about a little bit about what drives people to not spend. And unfortunately, Part of that, a big part of that is because you have been taught to not spend. You have been conditioned to protect your principal and reduce your spending during poor market events. You have been conditioned, and, and some of it for good reason, some of it for really bad reasons, honestly, So sort of self-serving reasons for the financial service industry. So we're going to give you some of the numbers, statistics, and then, of course, hopefully give you some strategies and ideas and, a bit, and, and ways to be able to spend more freely, spend more aggressively. So, In other words, retire earlier, spend more, of course, spend less, pay less in taxes, and have less fear in retirement. Paul, this is a big, this, is, this impacts just about every person that's listening that has Somewhere between seven hundred and ten million dollars saved for retirement, doesn't it? At least it the does, data it tells does. us that. It it does, and, and you know you you hear about all the risks in retirement. And you listen to any talk show, turn on any news, and they're always talking about all the risks. But this is a risk no one talks about. We've seen it a lot, and it really is a problem. And I'm excited to get get into it, and, and all the reasons why, because it's really about how to live a quality of life that you deserve. You've been saving all your, you know, your whole life. It's really a, a time to to enjoy it, and we're going to get into it today. So some of it's psychological, Paul. Right? Certainly, a big part of it's psychological. And there, there are there are tools, there are things that we can educate you and help you to better understand to navigate when you're feeling that uncertainty, that anxiety. See, the p disconnect for people that are in their fifties and sixties is how their their lack of understanding how their relationship with money will evolve. From serving money to allowing money to serve them, this is very difficult. But remember, there's no award for being the richest person in the graveyard. So if you want to learn how to be able to spend down your money more aggressively and avoid outliving your money with a zero chance of outliving your income and building a 30-year customized retirement plan, you need to attend one of our eight-hour courses and these Courses are taught at all the major universities, that, wherever you're listening to us, at major universities. It's eight hours in length, and all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. 
Kirk and Paul, how often do you encounter this risk? People actually underspending because, you know, when I think of risks in retirement, I think people overspending typically. That I'm going to jump in, Paul, and then I'll let you jump in real quick. But I just want to say that it, this applies to every single person between the ages of, I mean, between the the, the, the investable assets of of a million and ten million. Every one of these people will fall victim to this risk and surrender to this risk. And the and the reason why we're going to talk about, but the, everyone's told you not to spend. Everyone's told you to spend your three or four percent withdrawal rates. All of you have the ability in your 60s, 60, 65 years old, to be able to take withdrawal rates of 6, 7, 8, 9% withdrawal rates per year with zero chance of outliving your income. But it requires a lot of customized, individualized planning. And the only way to gain that knowledge is through education. You've got to understand all the different levers to pull to be able to maximize your income. Because, Paul, we talk about this all the time. It's not what you invest in that's going to drive performance in retirement, right? It's how and when you take your income from which investments during different market conditions. That's correct. And, you know, Megan, it's, it's a great question you asked. And there's, we have a lot of stories. We've met a lot of people who have passed away with way more money than they should have, right? Going back to Kirk's quote. And, and, and we see it. We see people who work longer than they should, never enjoy the retirement, the kids are happy because they're, you know, they're going to have millions of dollars, but that's not what most people want, right? That's not most people's plan for retirement. Paul, the numbers tell the story that, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, the, a, uh, the average across all wealth levels that when people die, the majority of people have between 80 to 90% of the wealth that they started with in retirement. In other words, They have protected their principal like they were taught. But when you have one, two, three, four, five, six million dollars, you don't need to protect your principal because you can enjoy those dollars. Retire earlier. Be more active if you have a plan for all of the potential risks and you can do it. You just need to know where the risks are and how to manage those. And that's what the eight-hour course is about, how to build that 30-year individualized, customized plan to maximize my income, retire earlier, pay less taxes, and have less fear. To have that, you need eight hours of education at one of the major universities. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. There's plenty more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. We're so glad you're with us today for another great edition of the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both Retirement Education Foundation instructors. That's right. They're financial instructors and you can meet them and other instructors when you make plans to attend the foundation's upcoming retirement planning courses. Now, these are like master's level courses, and they're held at major local universities. So wherever you're listening today, we have a course and a location that's convenient for you, including the University of Missouri, the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. Now, it's your choice, either a one-day course or a two-day course. You can register right now. The seats do fill up quickly. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call to register at 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, this program, the one you're listening to right now, you can find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Be sure to subscribe. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. We hope you'll listen and share with a friend. I want to get back to what we're talking about today here on the program, Kirk and Paul. One of the biggest risks out there, which is underspending. And I want to make sure I heard this correctly. The two of you mentioned that when people pass away, they're typically passing away with 80% of the wealth that they had at the time of their retirement. Is that actually right? So it's a big number. Be honest with you, when we when we were uh, looking at some of the research around this, it, it shocked us to that that's a big number. But you know, honestly, 
for Paul and I, who are, I mean, and, and along the, uh, with all the other instructors that are teaching these courses, it's what we see. There's a lot of fear and anxiety, and the older you get, and as you age, and once you have, have to provide your own paychecks on a monthly basis, in other words, no one else is sending you a paycheck every month, then we, we start to feel more vulnerable. And as we age, cognitively things change and it becomes even more vulnerable. And Paul, I don't know about you, but based upon the tens of thousands of people we have now taught at all these major universities, I most of the people we meet, that is not their intention to have 80, 90% of their wealth still when they die. I mean, occasionally we stumble into the person that says, you know what, I want to leave a big legacy. Okay. And of course, one of the things we help people to identify is, you know, anxiety and fear can manifest itself in a number of different ways. And one of the ways we see people going into retirement who are really afraid about living their money, that it manifests, manifests in itself is, I want to leave a big legacy to my children. And occasionally that is really what their intent is. But if that's their intent, then you know what they just buy a lot of guaranteed life insurance and spend your money. Then you can guarantee you have a big legacy and you can enjoy your money because that's what you worked 40 years of your life. But really, most of the time, it's a fear of outliving your money and do not understand all the different obstacles and challenges they're going to be confronted with. And they're not confident enough that they know enough to be able to manage it, Paul. Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Kirk, because uh, it's important that people understand that 80% number, those people didn't want 80% upon their passing. In fact, in that same study, over 50% of those people said, admitted to, the reason was because of anxiety. You know, people are anxious of spending. People don't purposely keep their principal, protect their principal because they want to die with millions of dollars. They do it because they're, they're afraid of about living their money because of all the things they hear about all day long. So it's, it's not that people are dying with that money because they want to. The majority of these people, this is not their goal. That was not their plan when they enter retirement. And for most of those people, they would admit that they didn't really get to do the things they wanted to do in retirement because they were always so anxious about spending. They were always uncomfortable. Well, even the listeners know this to be true. I mean, yeah, you, we, we all know people. Right. That, of course. I mean, we know our own families, our own parents, our own grandparents who who if they had any sort of wealth, that one to 10 million. And, you know, it, it might be helpful. Right. I, I think part of the reason maybe next segment, what we should tackle is why are people so afraid? Like what happened that caused this much anxiety? You're, you're taught to be afraid. You're taught to protect your principal. You're taught to only spend your three to four. You're taught those things. And we'll talk about the reasons why you have been taught to do that. But Paul, one of the challenges, we're just so afraid that what if I have a health event? What if we have a recession? What if we have a depression? I don't have anything special. I have a moderate portfolio, a 60, 40 portfolio that I'm just pulling money out of. And my advisors and brokers told me, Hey, you need to protect your principal. And oh, if we have a major market event, you have to reduce your spending. And that's what they do. And they just never spend their money in it. And it's really frustrating because we see people working much longer than they need to. And because they're not getting good education and good advice, they're working longer. And that working longer is limiting some of the tax planning and repositioning of assets that need to be happening in their 60s instead of taking and using these strategies out of fear, they're going to continue working, right? And so it, it's a vicious circle and there's nowhere to go to get the advice to say, how do I withdraw five, six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rate so I can spend down my principal and not worry about outliving my money? It just doesn't exist out there. It, it doesn't. And we all, we've all met people. We all know the stories. We've all heard the stories of, of someone working and working and working and they pass away, they die at their job, in their chair, and never spend any of their money, never enjoyed any of it because of fear, the, the sort of what-if mentality that you just talked about. And, and, and this is where education, you know, we're talking about a, a risk that people don't talk about, right, Kirk? How often do people talk about this as a risk, right? How, uh, people think of risk of, of overspending, not underspending. This is a big problem. It's a big problem. It is, and, and I promise, I promise listeners, if you're listening right now, I promise, first, keep listening to the show, but if you attend a class, I promise you that we're going to show you how to spend down your principal a 
more aggressively with no chance of outliving your income. I promise you, promise you, you attend these classes, these eight-hour classes. These are master's level courses. I promise you, you will have at least the knowledge You'll at least know the levers that need to be used to be able to create this type of retirement. I promise you, you'll get that. You just have to attend an eight-hour course. And stick around for the rest of the show because we're going to dig into some of the reasons why this is being taught and why people are underspending. But back to the class. If you just want to check out some of the information from the class or even a sample of the planning we're teaching the class. We've got webinars on the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And check out some of the webinars and register for one of these classes. You can even stream it from your home if you don't want to go to the university. And we want you to register today. So head to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. We're back in a moment with Kirk and Paul. It's always a pleasure to be with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler for the Retirement Education Hour. We sure are glad that you've tuned in today as we've been talking about a big risk that typically doesn't get a lot of attention, but we want you to know about it. And that is underspending in retirement. We're breaking this down and we have more to talk about. We want you to to stick around for this. We also want you to get registered for the foundation's upcoming retirement planning courses. Now, these courses are held at major colleges and universities wherever you're listening. So if you are in Missouri, good news. These courses are held at the University of Missouri. If you're in the greater Detroit area or Michigan, these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. You can even choose to view these courses from the comfort of your own home. They are streamed live. Here's how to find out more and how to reserve your seat. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to get registered. Here's the phone number, 800-240-8981. We're going to jump back into our discussion today about underspending in retirement. Yes, it's a risk, and you could be at risk for this. We want to remind you that you can re-listen to this program or share it with a friend. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Just search for Retirement Education Hour and be sure to subscribe. So Kirk and Paul, let's talk about this underspending problem in retirement. What are some of the the things that create this, that lead up to people not spending their wealth that they've created? So here's the deal. Your entire lives, we we are conditioned to believe certain things based upon where we consume our information. And the financial service industry is really good at conditioning our behaviors around what we invest in and what we save and how we save and what we do with our money from an investment perspective. And so from a very young age, you have been hearing the financial service industry telling you, you need to protect your principal. They've been saying, when we have major market events, reduce your spending if you're in retirement. You're going to have to cut back. You won't need as much in retirement. That's what they tell you. They'll tell you you'll spend less in retirement. I'll give you another example. When you go to your advisors and broker and you're thinking about retirement, they're going to ask you, what do you need to be able to retire? Not what do you want in retirement? They tell you, what do you need? And here is the bottom line. The bottom line is the less you spend in retirement, the more the financial service industry makes. The financial service industry makes their living based upon the total money of yours that they are managing. And the more you spend, the less they're going to manage. And when the markets are going down, their income is going down. So they certainly want you to spend less because they don't want to lose any more of those assets that they're managing. That's one. Two is to be able to spend down your principal effectively without the risk of outliving your money, someone would need to spend, not uh, uh, not spend 30 minutes putting information into a probability of success software like eMoney or Money Guide Pro, but someone would need to map out individually for each person 30 years of a retirement plan with every different type of money into different buckets, depending on when you're taking income, how much you're going to take, 
having pivot accounts, creating tax efficiencies, it requires, I, I could tell you in our private practice that we kind of operate like a family office, it takes us 50, 60, 70 hours to build an individual retirement plan. That is not a profitable business model for, for the financial service industry with people that have one to $10 million of investable assets. They just don't make enough money on you guys to spend the 50 hours it takes. So they come up with very simple solutions that are scalable for them so that they can meet more people, sell more people, do less planning, and you will self-regulate because they have told you for the last 30 years of your life, you need to protect your principal and spend less when the markets are, are we're going through temporary market events. Did I describe that okay, Paul? Yeah, you did it perfectly. And, and you know, when you, when you listen to the news, you know, it, people, they don't say this directly, right? They're not saying this directly. They say it indirectly because they promote this sort of scarcity mindset of, you know, fear. What if? What if this bad thing happens? What if that bad thing happens, right? And they promote that because, as you say, it allows, it sort of shifts the responsibility to you all, to you retirees. They don't have to do the work. They want you to do the work. They want you to take responsibility rather than them spend the time and do true planning to allow you to spend down your principal and enjoy your life. It, it's sort of a, I hate to say it, it sounds horrible. It's a lazy person's way of helping people, but it is, it, it's, it's, a business. it's everywhere. It's a business. It's a business model and it's worked. It's effective. People make a lot of money because of it. Paul, they came up, they've come up with all these rules. In 1994, Bill Bangin developed the 4% rule. That's the yes. guy's name. Yes. The most profitable rule that the financial service industry ever created because they could scale for all retirees and created a one-size-fits-all rule, the 4% rule, the 60-40 rule. Everyone uses it. All of your online calculators are using it. Your 401K, Schwab's, Fidelity's, they're all... Vanguard's, they're all using it. In fact, Vanguard's using a 2.8% rule right now. Schwab's using a 3.7% rule. Fidelity's using a 3.8% rule. I think Morningstar's at 3.2%. They're all using the same rules so that they don't have to do planning and you won't spend your money. That's the reason the question they ask you is what do you need, not what do you want? And that's why when you go say, hey, do I have enough to retire? Uh, you should be good. Probability, you got an 80, 80. The dial is green. You should be okay. Boy, that makes you feel really comfortable, doesn't it? And here's the other disconnect. They are not transparent, Paul. And I think this is what we should talk about next segment is they're not transparent about what the majority of baby, what the average baby boomer has, right? And it's a lot less than you. You one to $10 million people, you are far above average heading into retirement. So all the rules are based upon the average baby boomer. And it's funny how they don't educate and describe what do they define as average and who should be really following all these general rules. Look, the class is an eight-hour class. It's a, it, it really is. It's an advanced, almost master's level course, 200-page textbook. We split it up in two evenings, four hours per evening, or a full Saturday, a one full day course. We're teaching them at all the major universities. You can also stream them from your own home if you're more comfortable doing that. All we ask is a $29 donation that goes to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back shortly. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Here in the studio with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Thanks for tuning in to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. Great conversation today with Kirk and Paul. And we want to remind you there's still time to get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's upcoming retirement planning courses taught at major local universities. Wherever you're listening to us today, there is a place for you to attend, including the University of Missouri, the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. Now, it's your choice. You can attend a one-day course or you can attend the course over two days. You register at the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. 
or you can call to get registered at 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. Today's program, it's found wherever you find your favorite podcasts. We want you to go search for it. Just search for Retirement Education Hour and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And you're welcome to share that episode that you listen to with a friend. We hope that you will. Today's show, well, it's all about underspending in retirement. Who knew that this was a problem? But apparently it is. And it's actually, it's a pretty big risk. We're breaking that down for you. If the people listening today, and I think most of our listeners, they are not the average baby boomer, Kirk and Paul. Why should they not be following all those general rules of thumb that we hear about when it comes to retirement planning? So it's funny. We have taught tens of thousands of people at the at our courses, at the charities courses, uh, the, the Retirement Education Foundation's courses at all these universities for, I don't know, we've been doing this for 10, 12 years now teaching these courses. Tens of thousands of people. And consistently, people that walk in that have, you know, one to 10 million, one to 20 million dollars, they all believe they're the average baby boomer. And they are shocked when we give them the numbers and the statistics. So I want to do that today. I thought it would be helpful for our listeners to understand that the average baby boomer will retire with about $200,000 saved. That's all they have, about $200,000. That's the average baby boomer. Now, surprisingly, it's 40% of baby boomers, almost 40% of baby boomers, all they have is Social Security. It's, it's over a little over a third of baby boomers have nothing saved for retirement. All they have is Social Security. So all the rules like you're going to live on less in retirement is it, it's all skewed. The data, the studies, the research are skewed because a third, over a third of the people, all they have is Social Security. And then you've got the average baby boomer only having $200,000 saved. They they have to. Those people have to protect their principal. If all you have saved is $200,000 in retirement, you have to protect your principal because you have no wiggle room when bad things happen. You have to protect your principal. You have to re- live on 3 4%. You have to follow the cookie cutter one size fits all solutions and use the probabilities. All the garbage that the industry's promoting as if you're all average, you all should be following these rules. They, it doesn't apply to most of you. You won to even seven hundred to to ten twenty million dollars. You need something more individualized, customized for you, so you can learn how to maximize your income. And I can tell you, you can go to the website right now, and we do. I think it's a thirty minute webinar or forty minute webinar, walking through what an advanced retirement plan looks like. It walks you through exactly the things we're going to talk about and teach you in the eight hour course. And you'll, after seeing that, you'll understand why the course is eight hours. But in that plan, Paul, we've got someone retiring with $2 million at 65 years old, and they are going to be able to withdraw $160,000 a year. And they have zero chance of breaking that plan. They have zero chance of outliving their income. They cannot outlive their income. And there's protections against long-term care events in their 80s, but it's allowing them to retire earlier and withdraw 8% of their wealth at 65 years old and have a controlled spend down to their principal with no risk of outliving their income. But they have an individualized plan with pivot accounts, sub accounts, everything mapped out for 30 years, Paul. Yeah, but you're talking about a plan that the majority of people listening today have never seen, right? You're talking about a plan that takes a lot of time that most advisors in this industry aren't willing to do, right? So for most people who are listening, their plan is take 3 4% out, have a probability of success. That's their plan. So in order to do what you just talked about, that requ- and we're going to talk about that later, right? We're going to get into that. What does it take to be able to take 8 9 10% out withdrawal rates and never outlive your money? That takes a lot of time and a lot of planning, and that's the importance of the class, right? That's what people will learn when they come to the class, they're going to learn what it takes to do what you just talked about. But that is not typical, right? That's not, would you, would you agree? That's not typically what people get when they meet a financial advisor no. in our industry. No, Paul, they're getting e-money, money guy pro. It's, these are softwares, uh, pretty beautiful, nice they're, looking. They are. And, and, and most, most of the major firms are using this, uh, well, most firms are using them. Those are the two most popular 
what would be described as this planning software. And all it is is giving you 30, 40 pages of probabilities. But they call them retirement plans, Kirk. I know. They call them retirement plans. I know. And and it's a wonderful, useful tool, especially for that average baby boomer. But but listen, you've got $3 million. You can have a controlled spend down of that and then die with a half a million dollars or a million left for the kids. Right? You can do that. And therefore, you don't need to just spend 3 or 4%. You can spend five, six, seven, eight percent and still not outlive your income, not outlive your money, still have protections for long term care, protecting the surviving spouse. Legacy. But it does legacy, it, it re, but it requires an individualized plan. And, and, and I tell, I'm telling you, folks, a lot of this is behavioral. And, and maybe, maybe, Paul, maybe that's something we talk about in the next segment is some of the behaviors that are driving this. And it's, Paul, for those of you that aren't regular listeners, may not know this, but Paul's a PsyD, he's a psychologist who specialized in in, uh, the uh, the elderly, the older. So I think it's helpful. We'll talk about the amount of people who panicked that were over the age of 65 during COVID or during during, uh, the financial crisis. How many people panicked and went to cash and reduced their spendings? Look, we've got $76 trillion that's going to pass from this generation, the baby boomers, down to the kids. That isn't out of, that's their desire or wish to pass that much wealth. It's going to be driven out of fear and underspending what they could otherwise be spending. Just attend one of the eight-hour courses. You have Nothing to lose other than a $29 donation to charity. And all of you that were telling you to come to the class can afford a $29 donation to charity. 200-page textbook, eight hours of education in a university setting, or you can stream it from your home. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Stay tuned. The show continues right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you're with us today. I'm joined by Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you signed up yet? We want you there for the foundation's retirement planning courses. These are held at major universities. No matter where you're listening today, we have an option for you. The University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University, and recently added the University of Missouri, you can register and reserve your seat right now at the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Again, it's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also pick up the phone and register that way. Here's the phone number, 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And if you'd rather attend virtually, there is a solution for that. These courses are streamed live. You can watch from the comfort of your own home. Get the details right now at retirementplanningedu.com. Org. We want to get back to the program. And speaking of today's show, you can find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Simply download those. You can listen again. You can share it with a friend or a spouse. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. This show has been really interesting. We're talking about a risk that sometimes flies under the radar, and that's the risk of underspending in retirement. And really, this is based on fear and anxiety. But Kirk and Paul, what are the drivers of all this fear and anxiety? What's the psychological underpinning that we need to be aware of? Well, I, you know, I think just as Americans right now, our society, we have a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety just because of everything that's going on, right? I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, fear, promoting fear and bad things is very profitable for the media for leaders, because it gives them the ability to take more power. I mean, there's so many reasons to, pre- I mean, every headline, every news station, everywhere you go, we got a war, we got this, we got inflation, we have all, we have political issues, we have, you know, <laughs> you name it, the headline is negative. So security's going away, this is happening, everything's bad. It's called clickbait, right? They are trying to drive eyeballs, viewers, and the more extreme the comments, the more fearful they present it, the more attention they get. But that doesn't help. That doesn't help you as you're aging. And that, I mean, really, think about it. You're, you're no longer getting a paycheck. 
cognitively, whether you want to accept this or not, we know things begin to diminish as early as our 50s and 60s and 70s. And, and for some, it's earlier than others. And mathematics, by the way, is the first cognitive skill that we begin to lose. And while you may not like totally cognitively be losing it, but you start to struggle to connect some of the dots. And it is so easy to get wrapped up in the fear and anxiety. And when you are fearful, when you have anxiety, there's this fight or flight mentality, right? And so we're we're getting to the age where we're not going to fight anymore. So we're gonna we're gonna try to escape. And escaping is I'm gonna stop spending. I'm gonna stop doing. I'll work longer so I don't have to confront these potential issues because I just don't know. I don't know. I don't have enough information. All and, and and at the same time, Paul, we've got the financial service industry promoting underspending promoting you got to protect your principal promoting back spending less during times of poor market events they're all promoting because they're making more money the longer you work the less you spend the more they make it's a perfect storm and that's why so many people are underspending their money paul and and, and you say something all the time that that scarcity mentality and and why that's problematic too and I, if you can elaborate you're the psychologist you understand this better than any of us well, I think you're doing a, a really good job. I think you're the psychologist here, actually. Yeah, no. I, I think you are. I you're think the you're converted. I think you've converted here. But, you know, here's what, let me just say one thing. One of the problems, and we all, we, we all understand that scarcity mentality. We all understand that what-if mindset. The problem is no amount of saving will ever make you feel better, right? If that's, if that's, where you, if that's who you are, if you're constantly in the state of fear that bad things are going to happen, and as Kirk said, you know, as you say, our industry promotes that. But if you're constantly in that mindset, the bad things are going to happen. You can save and save and save. You're still going to have that mindset. It's insatiable, right? There's no amount of saving that's ever going to make you feel better. So stop trying, right? This is not the solution. Sadly, though, we live in an environment, we live in a culture, we live in a world where, as you say, it's, we, we purposely promote it and it's self-serving. It's self-serving. For the financial industry, it's self-serving for the media, for the politicians, it's self-serving, and we're all caught up in it. And, and you know, we always say this. I, I, used to, I love this, this saying, you know, knowledge is power, right? Information gives you the tools to make good decisions. That's why I love this course so much. That's why I think it's so important that people get educated because that's the best antidote to that scarcity mentality. It really is. Knowledge is power. Paul, I can prove it. I mean, we can prove it. The data tells us we had 60% of baby boomers panic and go to cash during the financial crisis. We had 35% of baby boomers who panicked in March at the bottom during COVID, right? We know that baby boomers, anytime we have a major market event, they back down their spending. We know advisors tell people you need to downsize, you need to spend less. We know that some people react to elections or impeachments. It's fear. Fear sells. Fear is profitable. Everything's Profit, driven yeah. off of fear. Inflation. They tell they tell seniors that they can't spend because of rampant inflation is going to impact them, which is crazy because your spending patterns go way down in the 80s. I have we've taught th tens of thousands of people and helped thousands of people responsible for billions of dollars. I can tell you you're not going to spend in your 80s. This whole narrative of it, it, it's just fear mongering. It helps them to sell products. It helps them to sell, oh, no, I can invest your money better than others and we'll manage the portfolio around times of volatility. That's crazy. You No one can stock pick or market time. It's about income planning. It's about taking your income from the right places during times of market volatility. And as a result, if you understand the levers that drives success, that's going to give you the freedom to not adjust your spending during short-term market events at all. You'll continue spending because guess what? I anticipated something happening four to seven times during my retirement, and I'm just pivoting as if nothing needs to change. So just invest $29 you're giving a donation to charity and invest the eight hours of education. We're teaching at most of the major universities and we're streaming live from the universities if you want to stay in your own home. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanning.com.
retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. We'll return. There's plenty more Retirement Education Hour coming up next. We're glad you're with us on the Retirement Education Hour. Great program here today. I'm learning a lot. I know you are as well. We have plenty more to get to. Want to make sure you're registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's Retirement Planning Courses. These are held at major universities. Wherever you're listening to our program today, we have a location for you, whether that's the University of Missouri, the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. And if you'd rather listen at home and watch, you can. These are streamed live. Here's how to register. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call to get registered, 800-240-8981. Again, 800-240-8981. And this program you're listening to now, you can re-listen or share it with a friend. Simply find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. When you do, and you can search for it, Retirement Education Hour, be sure to subscribe. You'll never miss an episode. Okay, back to our topic at hand. It's a big risk, and we're all at risk for it. Underspending in retirement. What's the solution to this, Kirk and Paul? Well, uh, the solution is education and an individualized plan. So before I give the solution, I'm hoping that some of the listeners who have recently tuned in to listening to us on a regular basis, are you're starting to hear a theme around our fear that people are with that one to $10 million, one to $20 million saved, you're missing it. You guys are, your retirements could be so much better. You can have uh, so much more income, pay so much less taxes. You can retire earlier and have a lot more freedom and less fear and anxiety in retirement. And so you're hearing us doing shows centered around trying to convince people of why they have to attend these eight-hour courses. Remember, we're a charity. Right, We're a national charity here to promote advanced retirement planning strategies so people can have a better retirement. And it's not an accident. Forbes has featured the charity in their magazine. We're teaching at major universities, and we're expanding as quickly as we can around the country into different universities because they want us in, in different places in the country. It's But trying to get people with $1 to $10 million who have had financial success doing what they've been doing they don't understand the, what they're going to be confronted with as they approach or get into retirement. And so we're trying so many different ways to convince you guys, just invest the eight hours. I, I, we're telling you, we're, we're, I mean, these, the engineers, the do-it-yourselfers, the CEOs, the CFOs, the CPAs, the attorneys, the more educated, the ones that have done really well financially, this is different. Retirement is so different. What is going to drive your success was very different than what drove your success when you were accumulating your wealth. It was simple. It was what you invested in and how much you saved. That's what drove it. And you did a great job at that, by the way. But what's going to drive success in retirement for you is going to be about building an individualized plan because you have to be strategic about your income planning. It won't be what you invest in that drives performance in retirement. It'll be pulling money out of the right accounts during different market conditions that's going to drive your success. It's going to be understanding how to fill brackets, not to bump brackets, knowing when and how to take your Social Security or start pulling money out of your retirement accounts, blending uh, non-IRAs in and Roth. It's that combination. It's what takes us 60 hours to build a plan. We teach you in that eight-hour class of how to, this is going to create the freedom. If you know, no matter what market event or condition you're confronted with, you know you have an account to pivot to, that you don't have to change your spending patterns because you're not going to outlive your money. You're not going to have a bad sequence of returns events, that you have a plan that you're taking out less money every year to get what you want because you're paying ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 less taxes per year. If you can save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, I don't have to take out as much to give me what I want. It's that fully comprehensive mapped out 30 year plan where you have ran 
hundreds of iterations to find the most efficient path through the 30 years, pay those little taxes, set up all the different pivot accounts because we're going to have the major market events. We're going to have them four to seven times throughout a 30-year retirement. You're not going to manage your portfolio around that. You have to manage your income. Paul, what did I miss? As you were talking, I, I, I was thinking about, and I know, I know we don't like to talk about our private practice, but as you're talking, I was thinking about a few meetings that I've had where, you know, people assume they were going to be able to spend $100,000. And at the end of the day, what they really wanted was to maximize their income. And when they realized they were able to spend $120,000, $130,000, $140,000, how that changed their life. Like all of a sudden, they were able to do things that they didn't think they could do. To me, that's the best part of teaching, right? I think the best part of this all is getting people to be able to really spend and maximize their spending at a level they never thought they could ever do. And it's because of the plans they learned about and the plans they were able to engage in. And I think, you know, Kirk, all of this, that's what it's really about. That's the joy of doing this is watching people maximize their spending. Now, there are some people who don't want to do that, right? There may be people who want to leave millions to their children. But if that's not you, if you want to maximize your spending, then really it goes back to the things you talked about, Kirk. It goes back to, to really mapping out a comprehensive plan. And, 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 you know, the best way to do it is to learn how to do it. So, Paul, for our listeners, listen, you don't need to withdraw 3 or 4% a year. You can have... Six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates out of your investments. You got two million in in your mid sixties. You can have one hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year in retirement. You can have that. You don't have to follow the cookie cutter one size fits all solutions that you're going to get everywhere else. But you have to understand the levers that need to be part of your retirement plan to be able to take your six, seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates. So register for one of our eight hour courses. They're taught at all the major universities. We teach them in one full Saturday or two evenings, four hours each night. 200-page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.